Hello, it's Scott Manley, back for one last time in my simulated interplanetary mission. We have visited all three planetary bodies here, we've got the crew back together, and so now we're going to go home. And it's going to be another 200 plus days of travel, so uh, let's try and condense this into about 10 minutes, because I'm not going to narrate for that length of time. So yeah, I mean, you know, we know how to take off from Minmus, it's relatively easy. We could just burn from Minmus orbit uh, up to escape velocity from the Kerbin system. But one of the problems is that because you're in orbit around a moon, the the sphere of influence transition to uh, the planetary system counts as one, and so you won't get uh, any information on the orbital orbit beyond Kerbin. So you have to kind of escape the Minmus uh, sphere of influence first before you actually do your interplanetary burn. You know, so kind of just put it on an elliptical orbit, line things up, and again, I'm going to go uh, direct or prograde and accelerate up until I hit about 29 giga meters or 29 million kilometers. Again, that number is chosen specifically so that when I orbit around, I shall come back at exactly the right time. And so, yeah, we're just finishing up our burn, getting up to roughly the right number. It's like 29,570-something. And uh, when we hit that number, we are ready to escape. So what we'll do, there we go. And you see, even though we stop thrusting, we still end up with uh, numbers changing, but uh, we're going to tie a time warp out into the interplanetary space. Again, because we want to see that we are going to encounter the, the planet Kerbin on its way around. And that may not be the case in this time, because, of course, it's the semi-major axis I'm trying to set here. And, and you see that because I'm firing from uh, Minmus, the distance... We're actually significantly, well, we're far enough away from the sun that the semi-major axis is slightly higher, which means we're going to arrive slightly later, and therefore we might actually miss the planet. But let's get into interplanetary space and find out. And uh, hopefully the Kraken will uh, be a little more easy on us now that we have managed to dump all those extra fuel tanks. So yeah, we're orbiting the sun, and yes, we do not have an encounter, so we got to figure out the best way to burn. See that our um, semi-major axis is up at 21,640. we got to bring that down to 21,588 for this case. And uh, yeah, we got a lot more control. In fact, I'm just you know letting Mechanical Jeb do this for me. We're just going to fire retrograde and slow down and see if we can get an intersect. Now, we've, of course, kept everything very carefully on the orbital plane, um, we don't want to add any further complications, but when you're going to be flying to other planets, uh, it's entirely possible that they are going to be inclined, and uh, not not even insignificantly. Oh, there we go. There. Oh, we got an encounter. The, the engine's not quite sure if we got an encounter or not, but I just need to hit the right time to time accelerate. Yes. Sometimes the time acceleration... Oh, yeah, there was this interesting bug... After the sphere of influence transition, a whole bunch of things that were orbiting uh, bodies around Ker Kerbin, they all flew off. They suddenly switched uh, SOI into interplanetary space. So all those probes that I carefully put into orbit around the, the planet Kerbin and uh, its various moons, they're all just floating around the system now because the game forgot. Hey, you know, it happens. Uh, <laughs> it is just a game, and I can edit them back wherever I want. So yeah, of course, we come around. Ten days out, we're going to make our final correction burn. This seems to be a good strategy again. So yeah, it's really hard to get the angle on uh, these estimated encounters, but it looks here, you can see that the encounter is outside of the, the orbit, so I'm going to use the, the rad minus. We're going to basically point in towards the sun and uh, curve our orbit vector over so that it approaches the planet more closely. And of course, we want to get that as close as possible, so we have to burn the least amount of fuel. Not that we are needing much fuel at this time. We've got about half a tank left. Uh, we could probably do several orbits around Kerbin or... <laughs> Or not, we could probably we could probably do an orbital insertion and land on Minmus again, 
just to show off. But really, uh, I think I've gone as far as I want with this mission. It has really been an epic quest. Uh, the clock is now showing like 680 odd days. It's ridiculous the amount of time these guys have spent in space. They uh, probably never want to see each other again. Um, <laughs> that's the big problem with interplanetary missions is, is basically the time that you, everything takes. There we go. Carbon periaps is getting nice and close. And uh, yeah, you can see that the orbit, uh, exit orbit is curving upwards. And that is because we are encountering the planet slightly below the plane. So what we want to do is use the, the normal direction and th thrust upwards, essentially, so that we bring uh, our encounter vector back closer to the plane. You know, for no other reason than uh, it looks neat. Uh, I At this point, we're just going to ditch into the sea. We're not exactly going to be able to aim for a Kerbal Space Program. Uh, sorry, Kerbal Space Center from uh, 10 days out. That would be a really nice thing, though, is to uh, have the, the display show like a wireframe of the continents uh, when uh, it's estimating your encounter position, you know, when it, it projects an orbital vector down and it intersects the surface, it should, um, it'd be really nice to see the, the continents projected at that time. Oh yeah, so that's us coming in there. You caught a glimpse of the planet and uh, the moon from a long way out. Now, uh, of course, floating point numbers have uh, gone and decided to raise the, the Apple key again to like 100 kilometers. So I got to once again fire close to the sun oh yeah and uh, the curb and the, the the kraken it went it ate my autopilot again so i gotta do all this manually not that it is hard but that is a bizarre bug to lose one part of the ship selectively i don't know <laughs> it's also one of the cooler ones because it does give me an excuse to actually fly these things manually so they're bringing the periaps down to 25 kilometers that gives us options we could still if we decide we want to, we can probably skip through the atmosphere and come around for another go if we want, or uh, we can land it. We shall decide when we get close. Maybe we will actually try to land close to a Kerbal Space Center. So there we go, zipping in at 100 times or 50 times normal speed, flying in. Let's see where we're going to come down. Oh, glitch, time glitch. There we go, we're hitting the top of the atmosphere, and holy crap, we're like right over Kent Kerbal Space Center. Uh, so we want to make sure we go down fast so that we get caught. And uh, yeah, if we can uh, if we can kind of get some control here, maybe we can uh, maybe we can actually land right at the, the space center. But I just want to make sure my uh, parakeet is deep inside the atmosphere so I don't do multiple orbits. They're like 11, that will totally kill my orbit. Now I just need to get myself, uh, adjust this, basically try, oh wait, yes, I forgot. It's the three-man capsule, uh, and it's wonderful aerodynamic properties. I'm stuck, I, whatever, whatever I've picked, I'm landing. Well, you can just about see where the space center is here. Um, so that is pretty impressive after, uh, 674 days in deep space. Uh, they won't have far to go in there uh, <laughs> for the rescue team. Yeah, I can't get any control over this. Um, I'm just dropping below two kilometers per second. And uh, yeah, it's. I think it's time to detach. There we go. Of course, because it has way lower aerodynamic resistance, it shoots on ahead. Nothing is going to hit it anytime soon. You can just see in the background, Kerbal Space Center. An inviting uh, homecoming for these guys. I mean, that, so that's the thing with really long duration missions. You know, people have talked about going to Mars, but the, really the biggest barrier isn't the rockets required. It isn't the the technology required for landing. It is simply the fact that you have to put a bunch of people in a spacecraft and they have to live together and they have to be fed and kept alive for roughly two years or, or longer. Uh, it, it is not kind to people. And 
uh, you know, spending two years in zero G is even an issue, just simply uh, without the risks of being in deep, deep space. I mean, this is why the space stations are kind of important to manned space programs because they let us practice these long duration missions. They let us figure out how to uh, you know keep people alive and how to run water recycling, how to grow food, how to recycle the oxygen. And, you know, when you compare the International Space Station to the the life support that was on the likes of Mir or Skylab, it's, you know, it's clear there's been a huge jump in the technology. Um, but it's probably still not enough to get uh, people to Mars safely. Although, you know, there's plenty of volunteers, I don't doubt, that would uh, go even with the risks that we have. I'm sure uh, in a planet of six, seven billion people, we can find more than a few Jebediah Kermans. But yeah, here we are coming home. It turns out we're about 40 kilometers from the space center as it drops down below the horizon. All right, so I think this conclusively proves, despite what people have said on the forums, it is entirely possible to run interplanetary missions in curb or space program. And we will no doubt see people landing on all the planets on day one. Well, except for maybe Moho, because that's supposed to be really close to the sun and uh, it'll actually kill you if you land there. But of the planets that are landable, I expect someone will land on each of the planets on day one. Anyway, it's time for me to find something else to do in Kerbal Space Program. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.